little bit. Starting with the uh, the eight inch Ritchie Brighton. Uh, this is a nice astrograph and provides a very flat feel when using cameras that have an APS-C size sensor, like a DSLR or the Orion Starshoot Pro. Uh, the RC is also nice being a Kaiser Green light telescope, even though it's different uh, if you're using hyperbolic primary and secondary mirrors. Um, short design, this actually works well, just as well on the Sirius mount as it would the Atlas mount. It's a fairly light telescope, it's under 20 pounds, before you attach your camera and astro imaging accessories. So this is good for medium to long focal length, the 1600 millimeters long f8, and a lot of times you want that extra resolution for smaller deep sky objects. If you want a slightly uh, wider field of view, or a much wider field of view, uh, you can go with one of our shorter refractors. Actually, I'll take you from long focal length, high res, to wide field of view, and that would actually be our new 80 millimeter triplet. This is a triplet aperchromatic refractor. Uh, we're actually announcing it here at Neve. Um, it's excellent. Obviously, visually, it's excellent, but it's also very good with your camera. It's an F6. It's a very fast refractor, only 480 millimeters long. So it's excellent for you know if you want to capture the wide field of view. It's oftentimes in astro imaging, from beginner to expert, uh, you want to get the large pieces of sky. You know, capture the North American Pelican Nebula. Um, it's actually using the high-end FPL 53 ED glass, and it is carbon fiber. So you've got. Uh, little to, to no thermal expansion or any issues with uh, focus change when the temperature changes outside. So this is our this is our new ED refractor. It will work really well if your uh, supports up to, you can put up to a 35 millimeter camera. It's most optimized for an APS-C sensor like many of our other telescopes. So again, the Starship Pro, a Canon Rebel is right at home with, uh, with the refractor. Okay. Uh, moving into the more of the medium focal length, uh, there's a telescope we actually don't have on display with us today, but I'm actually very, very partial to it. It's the Orion 190 F5.3 Maxitoff Newtonian Astrograph. Uh, it gives you a brilliant flat feel. It's actually the flattest telescope we offer. It requires no additional flattener, corrector of any kind. Um, this image is actually uh, virtually uncropped. It was merely just cropped to uh, provide uh, the correct aspect ratio for the for the printout. Uh, you have you can in be insured pinpoint stars from center to edge. Uh, the optics are just phenomenal. So this is actually uh, quite quite a quite a good astrograph. An f5.3 at th a thousand millimeter focal length uh, works with uh, basically any camera. If you're using a small format CCD to a larger format, again APS-C or even larger up to 35 millimeter. Uh, it's now standard with the dual speed focuser. At uh, unusual aperture at 190 millimeters, uh, seven and a half inch, but that's actually a really good size for being able to uh, accommodate a number of different mounts. Maybe you only have the Sirius mount or the Atlas uh, if you're, you know, you, you don't necessarily want to have, if you don't necessarily have a large, heavy equatorial mount at your disposal. This uh, weighs 22 pounds before adding the astro imaging gear, so it would actually work on a mount as small as our Sirius and probably be best fit with the Atlas mount. And I'm very partial to that one just because it's so flat and delivers uh, just superb images. What camera was used on this image? This was uh, with the Orion Starshoot Pro. It's the uh, one-shot color, 6.1 megapixel, uses the Sony CCD. Okay. Going with uh, accessories, um, one of our really interesting new accessories is the uh, the Orion Steady Star adaptive optics guider. It's also sometimes referred to as active optics. Now this is actually a little bit different than the adaptive optics used on the Keck Observatory, but what it does show you here there's actually an optical window here, uh, six millimeters thick. Now it uses refractive correction. So what happens is there there are four cardins here that uh, tilt this little window. This is not a lens; it's just a window. But as the window tilts, it actually moves the imaging plane in front of the camera just a little bit. And so you're guiding by moving this little window instead of actually moving the entire mount on your telescope. The other big advantage to that is not only does it not only does it move less weight. You don't have the problems with inertia or you know the mount.
not moving or you know, overshooting when you're auto-guiding, but it's also very, very fast. The auto-guider is placed on the off-axis guider up here, which can be any number of auto-guiders from from the Ryan Starshoot Auto Guider to the Starlight Express Lodestar uh, basic webcam, uh, provided you have you know good sensitivity. But from the time it takes the picture, it, it sends an auto guiding correction to within two milliseconds from the time it sees the error. So it's extremely fast response time. Now with traditional auto guiding, you're usually limited to maybe a couple of seconds. You're hard pressed to go much faster than about two seconds. During that two seconds, you can have uh, periodic error or a gust of wind or something you simply can't not guide out. With the Steady Star Adaptive Optics Guider, uh, depending on the brightness of the guide star, the speed of your computer, uh, the quality of your guide cam, you can go several times a second, at least five to ten times a second. Uh, you can actually potentially go up to more than 30 corrections a second. This is uh, much faster than auto guiding is, and that's that's really the advantage. It's the speed, so you can make several guiding corrections, take out the periodic error, uh, low frequency vibrations, and to some extent you can actually compensate a little bit for uh, bad seeing. Now, bad seeing is still bad seeing. You can't, you know, magically get sharp images if it's turbulent. However, it is fast enough. If you start exceeding 10 hertz, which this is capable of doing, um, even 20 hertz, you know, if you have a bright guide star, you're starting to actually compensate for some of that scintillation, and uh, you're going to get rounder and sharper stars. Uh, we have uh, an example photograph on our website. They're just, it's just a raw image showing a couple of 10-minute exposures, one using an auto-guider uh, once every uh, two seconds, uh, one guiding correction once every two seconds, versus the steady star making five corrections a second, which is really kind of not even the, nearly as fast as it could go, but even then you can clearly see the stars are more pinpoint with the faster adaptive optics guiding. So this is a real exciting new accessory for us. Um, what is the list price on this? This is a uh, list for $17.99. And it's compatible, it's, it's fairly universal. You can put anything back here, you know, CCD camera, DSLR. Uh, like I say, a number of uh, guiders can fit on top. It fits their Orion Starshoot Auto Guider, uh, uh, generic planetary imager webcam, uh, Starlight Lodestar. You can put a fish camp guider on here. Um, and it does come with its own uh, software. And it has a plug-in for Max and DL. We're actually currently working on uh, in further development with other software like CCD Autopilot. Uh, we're, we're ha we have a number of things in the makes to continuously update the drivers and provide more third-party support for other software programs. But it does include uh, the SteadyStar software, which provides you with all the control for the unit itself and the auto-guiding.